Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we were excited about uh, the win on Saturday, going back and looking at the film. Uh, a couple things that the guys played really hard. Uh, we played really fast, played with great emotion. Uh, some technique errors and some alignment errors. Uh, we talked about uh, amongst the staff, amongst the players yesterday, we've got to get cleaned up. Some of those things were first game uh, stuff, and some of them were just, um, you know, just uh, playing fast, but without with not great technique at times and alignments and stuff. And, and uh, those are going to happen in the first game. We got to get those cleaned up uh, moving forward. Uh, we're excited about having another home game. Uh, it was a great crowd, electric crowd, and, and I know the guys appreciated uh, the fan base coming out. And you now we've got a, a Bowling Green team that's coming off a big win and um, uh, playing with some confidence. And so we've got to have a great game plan and uh, throughout the week and get ready for Saturday. Yeah, um, you know, well, one thing that I'm a big believer in is whatever you did last Saturday has no bearing on the next Saturday, positive or, or really negative in that respect. Uh, you're judged each week when you go out there and, and uh, um, you're judged on Saturdays, but in essence, you need to win each day. You need to be able to um, prepare Monday through Friday to have a chance to be successful on Saturday and that's kind of what we talked about with the guys that uh, our preparation I thought was really good uh, against Nickel State and and there's a reason why we had success on Saturday because we were prepared and we prepared for two weeks for Nichols. now we only have uh, five days uh, for Bowling Green but if we have that same kind of mindset within our preparation on a daily basis uh, we have a chance to be successful on Saturday. Well, uh, I think some alignment errors we had on defense. Um, you know, we missed a couple of fits and a couple of gaps, uh, missed a few tackles that we need to be able to clean up. I thought we had a, you know, talking to the defense, we had a few too many explosive plays that uh, you want to try to eliminate. And uh, I just, you know, we didn't have many snaps, so it's easy to find uh, errors in those snaps. And uh, obviously for us, we need to play more snaps. You don't want to play more, but we need to play more to have better evaluation on some guys. But uh, I just know there was a lot of technique errors that Coach Hayes and the defensive staff talked about. Is there a player or two that stood out to you upon looking at the film that you maybe didn't realize live in the game on Saturday? Uh, I, I was really pleased with Revis coming in and um, playing a number of snaps in, in a backup role, but you know played enough that uh, he played as many probably – uh, as a number of the other guys, Evan Curley probably played similar there. I thought Revis did a really nice job of playing really physical, um, so I was impressed with him. Uh, on defense, uh, I thought um, Jordan Mitty did a really nice job, uh, and uh, he did some good things. Uh, Jonathan Alexander made a really big play that uh, uh, we knew he has. We know he has big playability and uh, was able to make a big play, and so you know those things stood out to me a little bit. Lance Robinson was really good on kickoff had three tackles and did everything technique wise we asked him to do and made some plays how much do you think the, the drops that Malik had you chalk up the first game being out there yeah probably uh made some made some really tough catches and uh then a couple balls that uh, i would say malik would would say himself he needs to come down with and uh, uh obviously we'll continue to go to him because he's a special player Yeah, just more than anything, a misfit. You know, we, we we were out of a gap. Some maybe they motioned one time, and we uh, on their touchdown run they motioned, and we didn't align correctly, uh, and they were able to to crease one there. And then uh, a couple other times, maybe one time late in the game when they had a long run, we just got misaligned again. And, and it's little things that um, you know we keep harping on and talking about that uh, uh, will hurt you in a critical game uh, when the scores a lot closer and, and so those are the things we just we have to continue to work on and continue to clean up uh, because we cannot get beat 
uh, with our own mistakes of alignment errors. Uh, if somebody makes a great play, they make a great play, but uh, we can't give them you know, free yards. You mentioned after the game that it's hard to evaluate an offensive line from your perspective down there, that they were moving the line of scrimmage, but as you went back and looked at the film, how, how good were you? I thought we played really well uh, up front. You, know, you rush for as many yards as we did and protect the quarterback like we did. Uh, a number of guys played, and, and that was the other thing we were, we were pleased with, to get as, as many guys in the game uh, that we could because we need experience behind the, the starters that we have. But uh, I, I thought they, uh, uh, they played at a really high level and uh, played with great energy and, and did a really good job communicating. You obviously have a, a pretty new staff too, but how difficult is Bowling Green to prepare for with a new staff and off of a good game? Well, it's difficult to, to prepare for those guys because we're watching, obviously, their one game and then watching other games from different staffs where the coordinators were. And so you don't have it in a blowout win like, like they had. You, it's kind of difficult to say, well, this is what, this is what they do. You know, there's, there's some carryover from what we've seen with uh, the coordinators from other schools. But, um, you know, it, uh, it'll be a work in progress. You know, we're watching film uh, of past years, you know, as well as not just that last game. You, you only had that one game, but they obviously had offensive success. What do they do well and how do they attack the defense? Uh, run the ball, try to outnumber you at the point of attack with a lot of uh, things that we would do offensively, a lot of motions, some uh, alignments. You know, they do a good job with their receivers and tight ends blocking as well. Um, to try to you know just create mismatches, try to create your and force your corners into being run players um, by cracking your safeties and um, just the different so many multitude of formations and running um, some similar plays, but doing it out of a lot of different formations and then whether it's a, a, a shift or a motion, trying to change your eyes and, and our eyes on defense have to be right this week. We we can't look at some of the eye candy that's motion and across in front of us. We have to focus on our keys. Can you uh, refresh my memory a little bit on um, the process that uh, Tyler Burns took to get back on the scene and then also can you tell me just a little bit about what he's done to not only earn a scholarship but earn enough playing time to score touchdowns? Um, I don't know everything that transpired w with Tyler. I know that um, he wanted to visit with me in the spring about uh, having an opportunity, and uh, I told him that's what he'd get was an opportunity to come back to the to the football team. And I didn't promise him uh, playing time. Didn't promise him an opportunity to get aid or anything. We just um, uh, invited him to come back, and uh, I think he's got a lot of close friends on the team. And I thought he did a nice job in the spring. He was nicked up a little bit in the spring, um, and then uh, in in the fall he continued to progress. Uh, where Tyler's made a difference for me is on special teams, more so than running back. Um, we put him on a number of special teams and he really um, showed the ability and more than that, the want to, to be a part of them. And uh, sometimes that's hard for guys that, you know, I know I, I just want to be the running back. I just want the carries. Well, he wanted to know how he could help the team and that was through special teams. And I know he played a number of snaps on special teams and then had an opportunity to play some play some tailback um, late in the game. And, and so I was just pleased with uh, his whole body of work throughout the, uh, the summer and the month of August. And, and so uh, we're excited to have him back. I guess kind of similar question on Landry Weber. I think like to ask last week what he did to impress you. What, what have you liked most of him? Competitiveness. I, I just, I love watching him compete on a daily basis. It doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a Monday in April or a, a, a Tuesday in August. The kid comes to work every day. Um, doesn't have bad days. He stacks good days on top of good days, and he's always a guy you recognize. Um, phenomenal special teams player that takes a lot of pride. And then uh, a guy that worked really hard this summer uh, to refine some of his route running, uh, caught a ton of balls, um, had a couple of big catches for us uh, on Saturday, and a guy that uh, we feel is uh, somebody that we can rely on, it doesn't matter if it's first down or third down or on special teams. And when you can have that kind of contribution, you, you're going to deserve a scholarship. Coach, you mentioned Josh and Tyler uh, so far today. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, both those guys came out of the 17 class. I know you guys, this regime wasn't part of that, but um, that's the last group to, to have a signing out of the Wichita area. I know you've been high on the Kansas City area, um, staying keyed into that spot. Um, but to that point, I guess how important is it to, to make sure that 
that were spread out throughout uh, throughout Kansas uh, when players like those, you know. Yeah, really important. We we need to win across the whole state of Kansas, and uh, uh, people don't understand that that takes time too. You don't you just don't come in here and all of a sudden have great relationships. We're fortunate that. Uh, Taylor Bratt's around that has a lot of relationships, but all of us new guys, with the exception of Colin, are building relationships, and that's something that that is that's recruiting in itself. And, and you're not just because hey, we're at Kansas State, we're new, you're going to come here um, from the state of Kansas. We have to build relationships. We have to invite them in. We have to um, treat them great when they're here, so that guys go back and say, you know what, that staff's pretty good. They they take care of you. They challenge you, and that's something that doesn't happen overnight, but uh, it's something that we're striving to do so that we can win in the state. One of the more notable guys on the roster out of Kansas, and especially the Wichita area, is Denzel. Um, for good reason, he put out a, a story on, on his dad earlier in the week, um, and then we saw the video of Skyler post-game getting emotional with his teammates uh, on Twitter, I think. Um, what have those two guys in particular, and I know they lived together in the past, mm -hmm. what, what, in those, what partic in particular have those two guys shown you that, that made them you know, worthy of captain? They care so much about their teammates. Um, they care so much about, uh, you know, Kansas State football. Um, they've been a part of this journey for an awful long time together, and uh, they're really close. And uh, I know that uh, guys look up to those two guys for what they do on the field, more importantly probably what they do off the field, um, conducting themselves the right way, uh, being servant leaders, making everybody around them better. And uh, those are two guys that uh, I was excited when the vote came out that those two guys were captains because two guys that I really look up to, two guys that uh, I can bounce a lot of things off of um, because I, I, I trust those two guys and know that they're going to give me not what I want to hear, but what I need to hear. Coach, um, talking with some people around Jonathan Alexander earlier today, the, the theme was about focus and about how he focuses on each play and how he at one point Well, when he's focused, he's a really good player, but he's also, for us, young into our program uh, and young into Kansas State, and, and yeah, he, he's still making some mistakes, and some of that can be focus. Uh, it's something that we're uh, harping on, but I think it's great when Jonathan's around the, the Denzel Goolsbees and the, and the A.J. Parkers and guys that have been around here that have played a lot of snaps for us. Um, because Jonathan is an impact guy, and um, he's learning our defense. He's learning the way we do things around here. Um, but we saw it all spring, too, as far as the big play capability, whether it was an interception, a strip, something. Uh, he got his hands on balls because he has so much length in the seam. And uh, I, I'm excited because the, the longer he's with us, the longer he's practicing, the more he understands things, the better he's going to be. And uh, I know one thing, Jonathan's got a lot of pride and he wants to be great. And uh, so we're going to continue to challenge him uh, because for us to be successful, he has to be a playmaker. How did you evaluate John Holcomb and what he did with his time on Saturday? He did, he did a really nice job. Um, we had a, a set of plays that we wanted to try to run with him. Um, to to accentuate his skill set and uh, he I thought he ran really hard I thought he ran really determined um, and it's something that down the line may become a part of a package for us that we can utilize him um, in certain situations you know red zone third down goal line whatever it may be time will tell uh, but uh, I was really pleased that when he got in there, he didn't care when he got in. He's like, okay, I have an opportunity. I got to make the most of it. And that's what, that's the one thing that we did talk about with the team is I don't care when your opportunity is. If it's because of an injury, it's because of uh, us being up late or you're the starter. When, when your opportunity comes, you have to make the most of it and you have to be productive. And that's one thing John was, was productive. You're fine. Um, can you break down Jax Deneen and Joshua Youngblood playing as two freshmen? Um, well, Jax became a part of the mix when Harder got hurt. And we didn't know if we were going to play Jax or not. And then when we lost Adam, we were short a little bit at fullback, and we pressed him into, into some time to see how we, he would respond. He's a guy that, that I think has a chance to be really good. 
He's just got to fine tune some techniques and some fundamentals and his focus and all those things, but he has a, a loads of ability and uh, he's a really good athlete, uh, moves his feet really well, uh, really productive with the ball in his hands, um, but he also has to be a, a dominant blocker and has to know who, who he's blocking and, and the right technique. And so uh, I'm excited because I think Jax will his best football is in front of him, and he'll he'll be a guy that I think will play more than the four that will probably play most of the year. Um, Youngblood is continuing to learn what we're doing offensively. He has tremendous speed, tremendous athleticism. Uh, we're just trying to design some things to make it maybe a little bit simpler on, on him because he doesn't have the experience that uh, – Oh, that Malik does and, and Joaquin does and Dalton does where he can play, mul or Landry where he can play multiple positions. Uh, but we also know that at that position you need to have more than five guys, four guys throughout the whole season. And so uh, we thought Josh's body of work was, was good enough throughout the, the month of August that we know his best football is in front of him. So even though he didn't catch any balls and stuff, we thought he had some productive plays out there and we'll continue to, to push the envelope with him as far as giving him more of the playbook. Do you think he can play beyond the four too? Yes, I do. And what, one more for you. Um, I mean, it's, fans seem to really enjoy the look into the locker room speeches and stuff after the game. Um, I don't know that's nothing entirely new with the social media access you give them, but why is that so important to you and letting people take a look at that stuff? Uh, just, we got a great fan base. Um, you have people that uh, really want to be a part of these guys' story, these guys' journey, and um, the right setting, I think it's a, it's a great thing. And uh, something that uh, uh, for our fans and, and people to be a part of uh, the journey that these guys are going on, I think it's pretty cool. We hear and talk so much about you know, how you assess the players, but you, know, you brought in a few guys on your staff who maybe hadn't worked before. How do you feel like the communication was for the first game? Yeah, I thought our communication was, was pretty good. Um, you know, at halftime, there was very simple adjustments. There weren't many adjustments on defense simply because we hadn't played very many snaps. Uh, offensively, we, we were talking about a number of things, but I liked the communication. You know, Scotty and, and Mess are real veteran guys that, um, you know, can take over and uh, accept input, you know, calculate the input, decide what they're going to use, and, and those two guys, are, I think, were exceptional. Uh, as far as the play calling as well and just listening to the input um, that guys were having between series I thought was was really good and so obviously it was a first game there's some kinks that we have to get ironed out I think operationally offensively we need to be faster calling plays we need to be faster in and out of the huddle I kind of anticipated that a little bit um, you know they weren't going fast Nichols wasn't so it's not like we weren't getting calls in those are things you're concerned about but we didn't have those issues uh, but it's going to still be a work in progress uh, uh, each week and I know that they probably are talking about more things that they need to improve upon than even I'm giving you just with their own uh, conversations among, m amongst each other, each other. Can you share the health status of Josh and Durham and Cody Fletcher at this point? Um, we're hoping that Cody gets a pr gets a practice late this week. That That's the plan for him. Now whether that makes him available uh, I'm not sure. Uh, JD's probable for this week. Um, there's a uh, there's a chance he could play. Uh, if not, it's not long term for for him for sure. Anything else? Yep. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned you just touched on special teams play. What was your overall sense for for how they played? I thought our kickoff team was really good. Um, we made some plays. Uh, Lance, in, in particular, made some really good plays, uh, and so that was that was encouraging. Uh, our kick return. I, I know that um, we were a little disappointed because I thought we had some creases and and we didn't quite maybe return them as long as far as we would like. I think we missed a couple of assignments um, that uh, we need to clean up. Uh, the punt we didn't have one, so that's that's encouraging. Tell Mess we'd like to keep that going if we could. And then uh, punt return, we were we were fine. We need to catch the ball, and we talked about that. We we misjudged a couple, um, but um, I'm confident in Philip because once he gets the ball in his hands, as you guys saw out there in the limited, whether it was on a punt or catching the ball or on a jet sweep, the, the kid's pretty electric. So uh, he'll he'll learn from that. You guys changed um, formations and personnel at quite a fast 
face in that first drive? Was that something you just really wanted to get out of the way and show everybody mm. you would get used to it? Or? Yeah, that's kind of what we do. You know, that's just what we do. It's it's like a hockey line change with Coach Mess. And um, I, trust me, on defense, that's difficult because you're trying to decide who's coming in, who's coming out. And um, and there's certain plays that he wants to get in that uh, are different personnels. And uh, I think that makes it challenging on a defense when you're not saying, I'm just defending one thing or one, one group of people. And, um, and, and also, we want to get more guys in, but that's just... I've seen him do this now for a few years, and that's kind of what we've done. It's probably a loaded question, but how do you like look at your role on game days? Uh, is Coach Messingham completely in charge of the offense, and you help more on defense? Are you overseeing both sides? Just what's your game day like? Uh, overseeing both sides, but I'm not getting into the play calling. I'll, I'll make suggestions or ask, hey, you know, we missed this. We missed the back on this blitz, or you know, we didn't pick up this one. Make sure we get that covered. It's things that we see. Um, that um, I want to make sure that, you know, if I see it out of a naked eye, you know, I asked Coach Hayes one time, you know, we, we, we blitz, we lost contain, make sure we address that. Yep, we had that written down. Or uh, something with mess as far as um, personnel grouping, you know, I thought we were trying to get this guy in the game. Yeah, we, we did. He was getting something fixed. We're trying to get him in the next series. Um, but, you know, not, not a not big into the game plan to say, hey, here's what we, we need to do now. It was a, a game that was that was out of reach, I thought, too. So, um, you know, each week will be a little bit different. But, um, you know, when we're on offense, I'm I'm quiet. When we're on defense, I'm I'm quiet. When we flip over, then I'll flip over and get a chance to talk to them while the other group's out there. I guess kind of as a follow-up to that, with, with Coach Klanderman up in the booth, are you kind of the guy who takes the point with the safeties, or does Van Malone have to take Van, Van still does uh, take the lead with those guys. I may grab somebody when they come off the field and visit with them a little bit, um, but uh, no, Van will do that.